Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to the Austin Lindsay channel. So let's say you've taken a photograph of a product as a flat lay style, uh, where you have the top down camera pointing down at the uh, product and it's laying on a white background, but you want to uh, make it look like it's standing, has a reflective surface, something like this. So what I do is I bring it into Photoshop, I press Command J and duplicate that layer. And then sometimes you can actually hit remove background and then see if Photoshop does a good job in removing the background, but generally it doesn't do that great of a job. So I, what I like to do is use the pen tool. So we're gonna just go ahead and Command Z undo this. I'm gonna select my pen tool, hit P. And then what I do is zoom in because I like to get really particular and really intricate. So what I like to do is just on a little bit on the inner edge of the product. So you're cutting off just a tiny couple pixels on the outside. That way none of the white will be showing. And this way I can get a nice clean edge. So I just kind of go along the whole product with the pen tool and cut it out. I'm gonna fast forward this so you don't have to watch the whole entire thing. One thing this does do is helps keep your uh, edges really straight. You can see here there's a little bit of a bulge in the packaging and I'd rather just keep the edge straight. So the pen tool helps you kind of cut out some of those extra little pieces. Same thing here at the top of the package. You can see that it's got a little bit of a warble just on the top here. What I can do is just come in here and uh, set the edge really straight and make my connection and make the package look just a little bit nicer. So once you get to your connection, you'll see the icon here turn to a circle and then you just click that and then it'll connect your path. And then you'll right click and then you do make selection. And the feather radius is pretty much the only thing I pay attention to. I set that to 0.07 pixels pretty much on all of my images. Generally, when you have different size or resolutions of images, you'll want to change this up. But for me, I found 0.07 works fine every time. So then I hit OK, and then I can zoom back out. And now you have your marching ants, and then we can go over here to the layer, and then we can make a new mask, and then that'll add a mask. I can turn off the background layer, and now you can see that you can see through to the background. What I'll then do next is select the background layer, just because I wanna put a layer on top of it and the way Photoshop works is the next thing you do goes over the last layer you've selected. So I select that background layer, hit solid color, and then make sure this is set to white or you can just type F six times and hit okay. Now you have a solid white background. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this layer. There's a couple ways of doing it. You can push Command J, you can drag the layer down to the duplicate icon down here. What I also do is just hit option and drag downward because I want the layer to be below the top layer here. We'll just rename this one here. This one will be called reflection. And then this one will be called our main layer. So now what I'm gonna do is apply the layer mask. You don't necessarily have to have the layer selected where the white box is around it. It can still be on this layer, but as long as you right click over the layer mask, you can hit apply layer mask. And now your layer mask is applied. What I'm gonna do is push Command T and bring up the layer transform box, right click and hit flip vertical. Now what this will do is flip this and if I hold down shift while I drag downward on this, it'll keep it constrained just to the vertical properties. I can't move it left or right. So I'll move this down so the caps are just barely touching. So then I'll go up to this warp transform icon and select it. And then uh, you probably won't see it change right away, but once you start zooming in, you'll see these Bezier handles come up. And I'm just gonna pull these down. Just to kind of give this reflective cap a more of a flat look. And then I'm gonna come back here and deselect this. And I'm gonna drag this up while holding the Shift key. And then uh, you can fine tune this a little bit more. Maybe I'll pull this handle down here and then squeeze this side in a little bit. And you can also just hit enter if you're okay with how everything looks. That'll apply the warp and apply the transform. All right, so now I have that looking good the way I want it. I can then zoom out a little bit. 
what I'm going to do is add a layer mask to this because what we want to do, because what I want to do with this image is make the reflection just kind of fade off. So I'm going to hit the B key for the brush tool and hit the D key to make sure my uh, black and white are selected. Sometimes if you have other colors, this will just reset it. And then you can hit the X key and it'll make black your dominant color or your main color. And then what I'm going to do is just resize this a little bit at about 40 to 50% hardness. And then with the layer mask selected over here, I'm just going to hold down shift and paint black onto this. And you can do it a couple times and just get that fade looking really nice. And then uh, what I'm going to do is come over here and grab an adjustment layer and uh, do a levels adjustment. I'm going to push command option G to clip this to the layer below we just made, this reflective cap layer. You can also, if you hold down option and move your mouse just to the center line between these two layers, you'll see the icon change and you can click. I use command option G because it's easier than trying to get my mouse between those two lines. So then I'll select the levels icon here and then move my mid slider over to the left a little bit and that'll brighten up the reflection. So if I was, if I had it sitting on a piece of acrylic or some sort of reflective surface, the reflection would be just a little bit lighter than the actual product. So I'm trying to mimic that. And then the other thing we're gonna do is create a new layer where you can push Command Shift N to create a new layer or you can come down here and push the new layer icon. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna clip this to the layer mask and then we're gonna get our brush tool again and push D and that'll make black on top here. And then I'm gonna push the number one on the keyboard and then what that'll do is bring my opacity to 10%. And then I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and then make it as soft as possible. You can push shift bracket to make the brush really soft and you can also push the bracket keys to make the brush larger or smaller. But what I like to do to make the brush larger or smaller or harder or softer is push option and control and hold that down while I slide my Wacom pen or even the mouse just across. If you go left or right, it'll make it hard, larger or smaller. And if you go up or down, it'll make it harder or softer. And the cool thing about this is it gives you a red overlay and that way you can see how hard or soft your brush is. So I'm gonna move it up, make it really soft and then make the brush a little bit smaller moving to the left and then I'm gonna paint just hold down shift and just paint just a little bit of a shadow down there because you that's what you'd have if you had this sitting on top of a piece of acrylic or something you have just a tiny little bit of a shadow so now that I've got my shadow down there what I can actually do is do the same thing on top on the layer above so I'm gonna push command shift N create a new layer and you can name these if you want and then um, push OK and then Command Shift G and then layer and then clip that and do the same thing. Create just a tiny bit of a shadow here just on top where the two pieces would have touched in real life. And then you can push Command Zero to zoom back out to 100%. And you can see now that we have a product that was shot in a flat lay scenario. Now it looks like it was shot standing up on a reflective surface. All right, you guys, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments field. I'll do my best to answer them. And thanks everyone for watching.